G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I've got a topic that's a little bit different to my usual format of doing tutorials. I thought today I'd cover uh, the topic of Autodesk Revit certification because um, I've had a lot of queries uh, from some colleagues and people in the industry and also just people I've met um, during my career about this topic and I thought I'd cover it because I'm now proudly certified. Um, I'm an Autodesk certified professional for Revit. Um, just passed my exam yesterday so I thought I'd give some context to people looking to take the exam and also people that maybe were thinking about it but hadn't quite made the decision yet. So what is it? Um, it's an industry recognized qualification that's valid for three years. It's conducted via an organization called Certiport, um, which will typically conduct the test on behalf of Autodesk in order to provide the certification. Um, so I'm not going to give you any answers. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. It's cheating and um, it's your chance to be tested to get certified. Uh, so giving people answers won't really teach you anything in the long run and it also means that the qualification is worth less if we just give out answers. Uh, but what I will cover is when and why to get certified, uh, what to expect and how the test works, some general tips and advice, um, what you should learn before you go in and just some other options for certification or additional certifications you can look into. So I think that the best time to get certified is probably after one to two years of using Revit in a professional environment. So I wouldn't use it if I was just at university. You probably won't get as much out of the context of how you use the software. Um, I do it prior or during Revit technical work to make sure that you have the ability to train and test yourself uh, before you go in. Otherwise you may not be able to try the skills out that you'll need for the test. And I recommend doing it while you're employed if possible, because to take the test, it costs about just between two and $300 depending on your currency. And sometimes companies will provide that payment for you uh, because I guess having a certified professional is a benefit for them as well from a marketing standpoint. So they may pay for it if you're lucky. Uh, why to get certified? So it's proof of your ability as a Revit user, um, potentially as a model manager or a BIM manager as well at a technical level. Um, it gives you more employment prospects if you're looking to land a job using Revit. Um, there's not that many options out there to prove that you know how to use Revit, minus just showing people that you know how with uh, like a portfolio or some examples. Um, it's also a good way to meet like-minded people. Uh, you'll, you'll see people at the certification that are doing it as well, and they're probably doing it for similar reasons to you, so they probably have common interests. Um, you'll meet a lot of good people there. Um, even at my test, I met about seven or eight people that were all really interesting. Some were contractors, some were engineers, uh, some were architects. So it's a great way to expand your network. Um, it's also a good way to learn and reinforce skills that you already have. Um, so it's a good way to just prove to yourself that you're also uh, worthy of the software and the skills that you use. Um, and I guess my reason that I did it is because I teach Revit. So it's important that if you're telling other people how to do something, you probably should have qualifications in order to do it. Um, even if you do have a lot of experience, it's worth having that to give people the confidence. So you'll now see that there's going to be a, a badge in my signature on all my videos just to give people that immediate recognition that they are watching a video of someone that probably knows what they're talking about most of the time. <laughs> so um, it's good for that as well. But anyway, uh, why not to get certified? Um, don't do it if you want to brag. So don't go in expecting to get 100% and for anyone to care if, if you do. Um, it's for you. It's not for other people to really get all excited about. And they probably won't anyway, <laughs> you know, unless you're a, a BIM manager or a really high level model manager or a technician, no one's really going to probably even understand what the purpose of it is. Um, so don't go in expecting to brag. Uh, don't expect to, you know, get a pay rise from your boss for getting it. It's not necessarily something that will force them to recognize that, you know, you deserve a higher pay level, like an architectural registration might. Um, so don't use it for that. And definitely don't use it to leapfrog into BIM management. So make sure that if you want to be a BIM manager, become a model, man model manager first or something in the middle tier uh, before you try and take on the really big roles. Um, it goes back to the quote of, you know, clothes don't make the man. Um, you need to earn the shoes before you wear them. And this test won't necessarily give you that ability, um, it, but it will test you on the way. And don't take the test if you don't use Revit, obviously. If you want to prove to a company that you know how to manage people using Revit, and you don't use it yourself, um, this isn't the way to do it. It's better to show through experience and through people you've worked with giving you good referrals. So how does the test work? So it's organized through software providers typically. Uh, mine was provided by a company called A2K Technologies, um, who are our company software provider as well. 
um, is typically conducted at their office in a room with other people taking the test. Um, sort of a test environment, quiet, you know, no talking, that sort of thing. Um, usually the test for architecture is 35 questions and you have up to two hours to finish the test. Uh, it took me about just over half an hour, um, but it may take people up to the full two hours depending on their experience level and how meticulously they check their questions. Um, you will actually use Revit during the test for most questions, so be ready to be tested on the software itself. Typically you'll use either the latest version or the one before, depending on the test. Uh, I think for mine, I use 2018, but you are meant to use 2019, we just had some technical difficulties. Um, and very few of the questions will be multiple choice or worded. In the case of my test, only two questions were, but you get different questions every time. So there's no guarantee on how many you will get of that nature. Uh, what models will they use? Um, typically expect things like sample models. I would say is probably usually what most questions would be based on. Um, so use these to train before the exam in either case. Uh, the test usually uses modified versions of these models as far as I know. Um, to suit questions or exercises with a purpose. Um, usually they'll be named after the type of exercise you're running through. Um, if you use a knowledge smart test, it's a little bit like that. Um, some questions not necessarily would be based on this, but a lot of them tend to be. I don't believe there's any issue with telling people that. Um, so I guess I'm moving on to tips and advice, which is probably more what you're after. Uh, I think the most important thing is read the questions really carefully and look out for things that I call gotchas, um, things where they're trying to trip you over, um, usually by you not reading the question properly or making assumptions that they're not asking you to do. So some examples of gotchas uh, where they're trying to catch you out is working with types or instances of elements. Uh, so for example, there might be a question, I'm not saying there will be, um, but there may be some that say change this element, but they don't refer to type. So you might go in and modify the type um, instead of modifying the element. And as a result, you might get the wrong answer because maybe you've influenced other elements outside that environment. So just be, be mindful that that's an issue. Um, make sure that you know, you're always referring to the right types by their written names in the questions. So if you're gonna draw a section, make sure it's the right type of section before you place it, for example. Um, that's, a, that's usually a gotcha on any good rabbit test. Um, you've got to catch people out that aren't reading the questions. And uh, make sure that you know, you're using the right types when you're creating something as well. Um, it's also important to keep in mind rounding and unit formats. I know on earlier versions of these tests, it was probably a bigger issue where they didn't actually usually specify the rounding, but there was only one right answer. Um, so usually I think they got you to put in exactly how the program said the answer. But now it's a bit friendlier, so all the questions will be formatted a bit like this. So they'll tell you the exact number of significant figures and also the units that they expect. Typically you won't need to convert. So if your answer in Revit is giving you millimeters, it's probably gonna be an answer in millimeters on the test as well. And there's typically no gotchas as far as I know on this. They're not trying to catch you out on conversion. Um, so don't expect to be caught out on a unit format if you just follow the way that the program is giving you the information back. And it's probably obvious, but don't rush. It's not a race. Uh, you have two hours. Um, so that's quite a lot of time for the questions. So don't feel that you need to race through it. Um, even if you have to go back to work, just don't rush it. It's not worth it. You're paying money, so use it well. And it's worth a reminder that uh, you can come back to every question at the end of the test. Um, so don't feel a need to have to answer every question as you go, uh, but keep track of the ones that you don't know the answer to, maybe by not answering them and then revisiting them after. And if you don't succeed at first, if you fail the test, uh, don't just try again the next day. Uh, take this as a sign that you need to learn more. Um, so go and learn more, practice, and then come back when you're ready. Uh, don't feel pressured to have to get this as fast as possible because at the end of the day, it's more what it is to you that you'll get more out of, I think. Um, also check the objectives on Certiport's website. So just Google exam objective domain Certiport and you should find this page which will have every program they offer certifications for. And Revit, there will be one about the exam objectives where they tell you every technique that you really need to know in order to pass their exam. And you'll get a selection of questions that relate to these topics. So what do you wanna learn prior? So I'm just gonna really quickly breeze through all the high level topics that you'll need to sort of have a basic and a fundamental understanding based on. 
Um, and you'll need to cover modeling as well as annotation techniques. So if you typically work in documentation on the projects you're on, it's probably worth familiarizing yourself with how to create things from scratch uh, and vice versa. If you don't tend to document, you might want to practice documentation for a while because I'll test both. So make sure that you're familiar with the ribbons in Revit. Um, even the nested ribbons, for example, uh, these ones that drop down with small arrows, such as below rooms, where you can go to area and volume computations. Um, they will test some things that are nested inside the ribbons to catch people out. Uh, also make sure that you learn about type creation and modification. So make sure you know how to deal with wall types, floor types, ceiling types, etc. Um, and also know how to deal with family types, also such as door types. Uh, be aware of how to place, modify, and also uh, create new types for creating instances of elements. There will be some basic uh, instance placement questions typically I would expect, um, as well as type-based questions. Uh, so keep in mind that you need to know how to edit and update loadable families. I don't think the family questions should usually be that hard, um, but you'll still need to know how to enter the family environment, make changes to families and reload families at the very least. I think that's always important. Uh, keep in mind, you need to know how work sharing works, and you also need to know how to use and review work sets. So you may notice some files will give you a tick box for create new local, which means it's a work shared file. So the questions probably relate to work sharing in these files typically, um, but it's always good to be mindful that you'll need to use these techniques occasionally. <clears throat> uh, also keep in mind, you need to know how to use visibility and also troubleshoot why you can't see things. Um, that's always a really common question on any Revit test. So for example, you'll need to know how to use toggle reveal hidden elements, but you also need to troubleshoot things like um, categories being turned off, because this is really a simulation of how people can make mistakes in Revit. So you might be a model manager trying to find out why a user can't see something in their model. Um, very common question. You, seen that, you know, need to know how to manage Revit and DWG links as well, and maintain them and do things such as copy monitor the links, which is probably a more advanced technique but it can come up on these tests from time to time. Uh, you need to know how to work with schedules. Uh, so all the techniques that relate to schedules that you can see here, um, highly recommend, especially counts and totals and knowing how to sort, itemize and filter that data. Keep in mind too that phase is relevant to schedules. Um, nearly all Revit tests I've taken seem to always have a question that deals with a schedule that's set to the wrong phase. Nearly always happens. Um, also learn just the basics of conceptual massing and topography generation. Um, there's always a bit of a curly question relating to massing on most Revit tests, and a lot of people don't know how to use the massing tools. So just at least understand the basics of it, especially how to generate mass floors. There's usually a question about mass floors in most Revit tests, not even just this one. And also learn how to annotate, so dimensions, tagging, but also detail families and repeating detail components. Uh, how to apply color schemes and modify them and also how to maintain legends and legend components. Uh, you'll also probably need to know the basic layout of the default Autodesk library. Um, I haven't, I didn't really need to use it very much, but I have heard some Revit tests that people have taken in the past, not just this one, will ask you to load a specific door family, for example. And obviously if you don't know where the library is or how it works, you may struggle uh, with these sorts of questions. Um, so just be mindful of how that library is set up. And also just more advanced techniques like design options, phasing, material settings, and family and project parameters. Um, you will probably see a few questions that relate to these more advanced techniques um, at a basic or a fundamental level. Um, there's some other options for certification as well, um, as well as taking the certification for Autodesk Revit. One is to take the Knowledge Smart tests. Um, they're not formal tests, but they're very similar from my experience. They're really good for BIM managers looking for a way to assess new people they're going to hire because you can get a summary sent back to you if you download a test for someone to take. So we use those quite a lot at our company, for example. Um, so be mindful of them. Um, also BIM creds by Building Smart. It's a formal method, um, but it's a multiple choice format only, and it's typically focused on BIM management. It's a good option for BIM managers trying to validate their experience because it's a lot more advanced. Uh, than most tests I've taken, and it requires you to understand things like national BIM standards, uh, which can be a bit more complex. So it's called BIM creds, and that's, that's worth looking into. And also just LinkedIn Learning, which has a wide variety of courses, 
Uh, previously, it was lynda.com and then they merged it with LinkedIn Learning. Um, the quality is typically quite decent and it's good for self-education and also testing. Um, you can also take some tertiary study courses. Uh, I've seen some for BIM management specifically, but pick them really carefully. So ask people that have taken the course if they got a lot out of it, because the quality can vary quite a lot. Some of them can almost just be like a how to use Revit course um, rather than a BIM management course, for example, and vice versa. They might start off without even teaching Revit um, so that the people can't even catch up. So just be mindful of that. But otherwise, um, that's all for the video. So thanks for watching and hopefully that helps. Um, but if you have any queries or anything you want to know, feel free to leave it down below and I'll always respond. Um, and to those, to those who are taking the test or thinking of it, um, good luck and just make sure you relax and don't stress out too much and hopefully you'll pass. So thanks for watching and if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.